Today on Demos with Angular, we're taking a look at how to install Linux, the terminal, and set up a great Angular development environment on a Chromebook using the latest technology called Christini. My name is Stephen Flum, and today we're going to be setting up Christini on a Chromebook that's been reconfigured from scratch. I just factory reset it. And to demo this, I'm going to be using my old timey Chromebook Pixel 2015 to show that it's even possible on really old laptops. Let's get started. All right, so as I said, I'm going to be using this freshly power washed Chromebook Pixel 2015. The only thing I had to do is I had to sign in to set up the screen mirroring, as well as I had to go into the Chrome flags and enable this one setting, enable VMs on experimental kernels. I had to do that because I am uh, on this old device, which didn't actually have Linux for that kernel in the main line of Chrome. So uh, normally when you buy a relatively new Chromebook, so anything that's built in the last three years or so, it will come with this automatically uh, on. You won't need to enable the experimental kernel. Uh, we can also take a look in the settings at the actual version of Chrome OS that I'm running. Just so you know, so this is Chrome 79, uh, just running the standard default build. I'm not running any beta or anything. Uh, but as soon as you turn on that flag, or as soon as you launch a Chromebook that's a little bit newer, you're going to see in the Chrome settings this very nice Linux beta. What you can do is you're basically going to say turn on. You're going to follow the install prompts. I'll say yes, install it. And what it's going to do is it's going to go down and behind the scenes set up this software that we call Christini, which is uh, a plan words, it's a fancier version of a crouton which uh, Crouton was, if you watched any of my previous videos or wanted to go into uh, set up Linux on a Chromebook previously, you would have to go into developer mode, you'd have to turn off all the security, all the uh, secure booting on the operating system. But now it's actually built into Chrome, and so it's much easier, it's much more tightly integrated. I'm just going to hide this shelf here so you can see the whole screen. So while this is running, there's not really anything you can do, so just give it a chance and we will wait this out. All right, and here we are. Now the uh, installation of Christini has finished. We can actually see we are in a full Linux console here. So you can run top, you can run all sorts of kind of Linux commands. Let me see if I can make this bigger. You can even cat etc slash OS release and see that we're running Debian under the hood. And now as Chrome updates uh, its installation and how Christini works, it will actually update your version of Linux as well, which is a really, really nice feature. So this now has actually been reduced to the same sort of setup and install instructions that you'd have on any sort of Ubuntu system. So I'm just going to install a bunch of really helpful tools. So I'm going to uh, sudo apt install, uh, and I'll just install all the things that I usually use. So I use git, I use ssh, I use htop, and what we'll do is there's a few other packages that we're going to be using, things like yarn, things like um, the Angular CLI, and we'll install all of those in the normal way using the internet. So for uh, NVM, first of all, to get access to all the great features that the Node version manager has where you need to be able to switch versions, uh, I just go to the NVM website and I find this nice little install script. So we'll go ahead and execute that. Uh, now I had to hit Control Shift V to paste because otherwise you're sending a Linux command or a terminal command to the shell. Uh, and then they always tell you to close and reopen your terminal, but I'll teach you a little trick. Um, when they put this sort of thing into your bashrc file, you can actually just type source bashrc. And what that will do is it will reload the shell with these settings from the bashrc file, so you don't have to close and reopen it. Um, now that we've installed NVM, I typically would go and install Yarn, but there's actually a newer script that I'm kind of excited about, which is called the Yarn Version Manager. So we'll go ahead and install the Yarn Version Manager. It's basically what NVM does for Node, uh, Yarn Version Manager does for Yarn. And the crazy thing about it is that it will actually automatically switch versions of Yarn if the project you're in requires a different version. So we should be able to just go ahead and run this curl command, pass that through Node. Uh, we haven't actually installed Node. So let's go ahead and install version 12 of Node. So I'm using NVM to install version 12, and now we should be able to run Node. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run the Yarn version manager, which whenever we try and use Yarn, it should just automatically use the right version. So let's try this out. So let's do yarn global add at angular slash CLI. Oops, I need to start using 
uh, this. So let's go ahead and install it in Bash RC. And again, we're just reloading the configuration from Bash RC so we don't have to close and reopen the terminal. And I'm globally installing Angular CLI. It's determined that it wants to use Yarn version 1.22.4, which should be a relatively recent version. And then it's actually doing that global install. So at the same time, why don't we go ahead and git clone a package from GitHub and actually try out doing Angular development. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to git clone. I'll just use HTTPS for now. We'll say github.com statement fluent. And we'll, we'll download the turnip app that I've been working on recently. So we've now cloned into turnip. And if I see it into turnip, I should be able to run yarn. Should install all those packages. Now, I can actually do Angular development here, right? I can install VI, I can do all those sorts of things that you would expect in a Linux terminal, but we want to do this one step better. And so what I want to do is I want to go install VS Code. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to the browser and we're going to install uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm just doing a Google search for VS Code to pull up the actual URL for VS Code and we will hit the download button. This is going to download a .deb file. And the nice thing is in Christini in Chrome OS, there's actually first party support for dev files. So it's going to see that this is a dev file. And when I double click on it, it's going to ask, do I actually want to install it? And I will say, yes, I do want to install it. Perfect. So that installation is in progress in the background. And at the same time, we can see that our yarn is running. So as soon as both of these processes are done, we should be able to both run our Angular application, as well as edit it and work on it in Visual Studio Code. And, all right, so both of those things are done. So now that Visual Studio Code has been installed in the Linux subsystem, I should actually just be able to run code at the command line, and it should open up the Visual Studio Code window. That seems to have worked perfectly. You can also, in the launcher, search for something like code, and you're going to see that it is installed a launcher icon there as well. So uh, we can here now run ng-serve. We'll just make sure we're using the local version of ng-serve using npx. And that will actually spin up a serving so that we can actually try out our application. Now, one of the nice things is that there is a set of ports. Uh, this includes port 4200, that if you listen on those ports within the Linux environment, you can access them from within the Chrome on the device. You don't have to do any sort of port forwarding. All of that is done for you automatically uh, on certain ports. So as soon as this process finishes, we'll pull up localhost 4200 and see if it works. All right, that is finished compiling. So let's jump over to Chrome again. And now let's actually try and look at it on localhost 4200. And there we go. Our application is working just fine. We have, we can put our application over on the side. We can put Visual Studio Code on one side, and we have a full normal editing environment that you would expect. The last thing that you might want to do if you're trying to work on a Chromebook is you want to access the Linux file system a little bit more. And so one of the things that you can see here is uh, in the file explorer, you can see all the downloads. So that's what's happening in the Chrome OS, uh, where you kind of expect these files to be blown away at any moment. But you can also see the Linux files. And so the entire file system um, from within the home folder of your user in Linux is available here. And so you could download a file in Chrome, copy it over to the Linux subsystem. These things work relatively seamlessly. And the same thing if you're using Google Drive, where all three of these or any other sources that you have attached, you can just go ahead and browse, upload, navigate those files. So that is it. In just a very small amount of time, we've taken a five-year-old Chromebook set up Linux on it, gotten it ready for Angular development. And now I can take that and I can become a productive developer without having to set up a big beefy machine, go get a Mac, anything like that. So I think this is a really great way for developers to get started with Angular. And it's actually what I do most of the time, right? I have a desktop computer at home, I have a desktop computer at work, but whenever I'm traveling, I just bring my Chromebook Pixel with me and it works really, really well. That's gonna be it for me. See you in the next video. Thanks.